Let's bring him in now, the general manager of the Regina Pats. And uh, I know everybody kind of misses those scrums with the coach and the GM. He joins us today. How are you doing, John? I'm good, Rod. Thanks. How are you? Good. I watched the uh, Zoom call that you did last week th- with the media. Thanks for that. A lot of the questions here today are going to be different from what you answered there last week, but one's the same. Um, how are you feeling your days these days? What, what What's keeping you busy getting ready for this season? Well, in some ways not a lot, but I think uh, there's been always been a fair amount going on just, uh, you know, talking with – personnel within the league, talking to your uh, fellow general managers periodically. I'm on the competition committee. Uh, we probably average a couple, you know, calls a month. Uh, I got to see four or five uh, midget and bantam games uh, back in October and November. So uh, there's something to do, but it's just certainly a lot different. You know, I apologize if this comes out as a stupid question, but you've been in this game forever. Is this the most challenging thing you've ever faced in your time, player or coach or management? Well, certainly the most challenging thing in a, in a obviously a, a very serious uh, tone. Um, it's a worldwide thing. You might deal with, I don't know, numerous things within an organization or within a team that are pretty relevant, pretty serious at that, very moment or in a short time frame, but this is something that's worldwide that's affecting everybody in some way, shape or form. So it's a, it's a, it's a certainly a a big deal and it's being treated as a big deal. No question Uh, from the health concern and then also how you're going to play. And I understand there's people that don't want sports playing, but um, you guys want to play. We want you to play. And the question is how you're going to play. And I guess that's my next question. I've talked to a lot of GMs that have literally said, we don't know yet how it's going to look. Like it is a month away, John. Is that the case? You don't necessarily know January 8th how you're going to do it, but you plan to do it. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think that the how to do it is probably uh, narrowing in. Um you know, so much of it is out of our hands, and I say our hands, the league's hands, but it's also all within our hands and their hands. Uh, the, you know, we've, as I just mentioned, the, the people you talk with, different committees, um, there's been a lot of information, a lot of tentative plans uh, given to the head government people, the head medical people in each uh, jurisdiction being the four western provinces and two states in in the u.s and then it goes from there so we certainly have input and because there's different plans set forth um that's why i believe we're going to play because the government is going to the governments are going to um okay something uh at some point i just read uh I knew Winnipeg had got okay for the NHL training camp starting January 3rd. I read a short article on it, and there's somebody either hypothetically or real was questioning their medical advisor. And he said, well, they proved it in in um, the summertime. And, you know, they certainly have more at their disposal than we do, but there's going to be testing. I don't know whether it's every day or not. Um, it's going to be basically a bubble. Um, that's why they're going to play. And to maybe a little bit lesser extent, that's why we're going to play, I believe. Uh, This is great, by the way, and I appreciate the info. And Darren, please track these questions that are coming in, because there's a million. John, you can imagine the Winnipeg people want to know what it was like to coach Timu and stuff like that. Look, we'll get to that. Um, But the one major shock to me through this, I got to think it was the same for you, is where sports rates in the world, because it's been our whole lives. Like Alan Miller sat across his desk from me like a month ago, six weeks ago, and he's like, look, we're not a priority. And he got it. Like he was very humble about it. But from a health perspective, sports isn't. And we've never faced that before, John. That's been a bit of an eye-opener. Yeah, for sure we're not. Like uh, we're we're not in the ways of, I believe, personally, in the, in the vaccine. Like the vaccine is certainly going to come. It's going to come probably all beat slowly in Canada uh, based on the stuff you read, even though it's maybe going to be available to, to the most important people, the medical people sometime in the new year. But um, 
I would think, and just my opinion, I would think that teenage players, teenage teenagers, period, but teenage hockey players that are healthy and fit are probably substantially low down the totem pole when the vaccine is at full up and running. That's just the way it would be. That's the way it should be. Uh, so that's certainly an area of priority there that is, it'll come at some point, but when that is, it'll be quite a bit later than now. Just a fun question on Connor Bedard, if you don't mind. Obviously, we've all been following his progress, not as closely as you, but I've got a point per game prediction for him. Craig Button was on here Monday. He says 0. 0.75, 0. 0.8 per game. Maybe you don't even like hearing that stuff, but what's your expectation for Connor here in his exceptional player season? Well, I probably thought, I've certainly thought about it. It's probably, um, I don't know that it's irrelevant in this, uh, in this even more bizarre year than usual for, you know, him being a 15 year old playing. A lot is to do with the players around him. We think we have a solid team around him, whether it's, um, you know, as, as much skill as there'll be in a couple of years, like that, that's debatable. But I looked at, I looked at Connor last year when I saw him play a handful of times, second half of the season. And when I come back and I would talk to Dave, I said, like, I think he's, and this isn't, this is to do with points, but it's not to do with points because there's other things. But I said, I think at 15, he's, you know, he can accomplish what Sammy did at 16. And Sammy was a very, very good player, obviously, for us his whole four years. At 16, I think he was around a point a game, maybe just under. He broke his, he sprained his ankle there, was super bad in March, so that killed things. But that's probably in the 0.75 to, to one point a game ratio. Uh, if I'm thinking back to Sammy's thing, and I'm not really looking at production, as I said, but I think, I think that's where he was at as a player, in my view, last spring. Yeah, imagine what you could have done maybe in the playoffs just to have Sam healthy at 16. I think he would have made a difference as to how things turned out. To the uh, to the fun questions from John in Winnipeg wants to know what it was like to coach Tamu Solani. I'm sure you've been asked a million times, but I haven't asked you that. What was it like? Well, he was an electrifying player. Um, you know, I won't say more so in that day, but... Uh, you know, the game has become about speed for, I don't know, the last 10 or 12 years. Uh, it wasn't quite so much about speed then as, a, as far as a team or as far as the entertainment value of a team or the how hockey was viewed. But Timo had speed, for sure. He played with speed. It allowed our team to be faster as a team. Uh, so it was, you know, it was tremendously exciting at that rookie season and all the seasons. And uh, I think the other thing was that there was all of a sudden, you know, fairly quickly into the season, there was a a media following that um, one can only happen in Canada, but had never been experienced, you know, probably by Winnipeg. Uh, maybe the Bobby Hall days, would there be less media? You know, it was uh, it was something to go to all the cities and be at home with the media attention he brought us. I bet. Why do players struggle to score fifty now, when the game's all about skill and there's no obstruction? Yet back then, there was a ton of 70, 70 plus goal scores. What it doesn't compute to me? Well, uh, <laughs> that's a pretty good question for sure. I don't know that there's an exact answer, but I think that the overall uh, the overall skill level is higher, but the overall coaching avenues available to coaches is is far more, and so I think that coaches can take to some extent the scoring out of the out of the game or keep it keep it lower. Um, but it, it is it's sort of hard to measure, and I, and I, but I don't think that. One thing, in my personal opinion, is the taking the red line out has made the game faster, um, for sure. But I don't think it makes it more offensive. Like I think that's just a fallacy that people thought. Um, so it, it's it's pretty interesting because there's certainly great players, a lot of great players, but there's only Ovechkin and maybe Matthews will continue that are scoring at anywhere close to that pace.
Yeah, what's well, funny, and Wendell, Wendell said it, with no red line, for whatever reason, we don't ever see a three-on-two anymore. We never do. So that might be part of the reason. Goalies are better now. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of reasons, but I just I haven't quite been able to put my finger on it. And, John, our show airs on Philadelphia cable TV. We get a lot of viewers writing us from Philadelphia, and it's kind of fun, you know. And, uh, obviously, you know, well, with your stature in that city in your time, American Hockey League Hall of Fame, what is it that makes Philly so special and tough, and why is it so revered as an American city? Well, I, I don't know. It, it, they, they really, they really galvanize behind their sports teams, um, good or bad. Like, I mean, I'm sure it's uh, the Eagles are taking a bit of a beating right now, I would guess. But uh, it's a great sports town, and uh, you can say that about a lot of places. And so, what's the difference? Difference? I, I don't know. Uh, you know, in hockey, it's maybe because they won pretty quick in the expansion era. There, seven years in. Um, and then those players, uh, Clark and et cetera, Schultz and Perrant and the whole group of them became icons and, you know, were revered throughout the city. And it was just a great big continuous love affair for the most part for the hockey team. Uh, I think blue collar viewed as a view blue collar city. If, you know, if you demonstrate that, um, as a team, and it may be a little bit easier to show that in hockey with how the game is played, but uh, they really take to you. But it's the same. It's not the same game with baseball, but a player like Chase Utley was really revered there because, you know, he, you could just sort of sense that he was this black and blue, blue collar worker, sort of like Clark was for hockey. He was for baseball. So they really take to those kind of people. I bet. Well, and we've, but, but that's the thing. This, this Philly media, has had me on their shows, and they want to talk about Brian Prop and, uh, you know, like Sask guys or Prairie guys. You mentioned Bobby Clark. But I got to say this. I talked to Tiger yesterday, our mutual friend, and I said, Tiger, we had a discussion over who's the toughest in each other from Saskatchewan ever, and I said, you, Tiger. And he goes, well, I don't disagree. But if not me, <laughs> <laughs> he said the hammer. He goes, the hammer doesn't get enough credit. And there's a Philly legend right there, isn't there? That's for sure. That's for sure. You, when you ask that question, you know, that, that's pretty tough to answer. Uh, there's Tiger, there's Schultz, and he was a little bit different because he was a higher level player. But uh, I don't know if either one of those guys really wanted to fight Clark if he was really mad either. So there's really tough left wingers there. Yeah, no kidding. Well, and by the way, Wendell says it's Joe Koser. So what we've discerned is that it's a very long list of great guys. Right. All right. John, sure. this has been awesome. I appreciate it. I do miss seeing you too, but I think it won't be long before we're back in the ring. So thanks for the time today and good luck with everything. Great. Thanks very much, Rod. You bet. The general manager of the Regina Pats, John Paddock. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.